is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. I want to lose. I want to win. I need professional help. Sports Betting Weekly. Sports Betting Weekly, sponsored by EasySportsData.com. The books use data, shouldn't you too? And this is Easy Sports Data, like the preschoolers use. EasySportsData.com. I went here and I went there. Now what? Sports Betting Weekly. I want to win. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. You should also check out SportsBettingLessons.com. You'll learn some old tricks because sometimes how you bet is more important than who you bet. SportsBettingLessons.com. Let's just do it. Let's meet this thing head on. And you were you were in it to win it. Talk about an education. Sports Betting Weekly. Wow, winning. Sports Betting Weekly. Sit back and enjoy the show. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Welcome to Sports Betting Weekly. I am second half Chaz, and it is Super Bowl week, which may not mean a lot to someone who isn't a football guy, but as a football guy, so it means a lot to me. We are coming off of, wow, three really, really great weeks of our opinions being right. And that's what we say. You know, when you listen to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, you're hearing our opinions. That's all they are. Now, some of them are right. Some of them are wrong. And that's why we have live action for when we're wrong. But sometimes we have live action for when we're right. And we've been right a lot. We were right three weeks ago. We were right two weeks ago. We were right last week. And the last two weeks in live action, we have cashed tickets before the game has ended. So in, re- in, in regards to cashing tickets before the game is ended, that's really the reason why you should tune in here. I mean, it's 8 o'clock East Coast time. So I'm thinking that if you got a DVR in your house, anything that you could be watching on the regular TV is there. If you've got games on that you're watching, while well, you should really tune in because we might be betting live on the game that you're watching. But anyway, so we're, we're going to – we're going to start the show, really pat ourselves on the back a little, and then taking a look at the board, and then we're going to slide into some props, some NFL props. And as you know, the guys at the casino spend days, literally days, locked in a room after the AFC Conference, NFC Conference Championships, getting those props together. And then finally, we're going to pick a winner. We're going to pick a side. And and I'm, I've already, if you've seen my social media posts, I'm already in pretty deep to the Super Bowl because all those tickets that we were cashing the last two weeks, I've been tailing them to the uh, Super Bowl, adding a two-teamer here, a three-teamer there, a two-teamer there. And the next thing I know, I had 14 tickets. And I'm telling you right now, I know for a fact I've never had 14 tickets on the Super Bowl. But this year, I've got 14 tickets, and I'm looking forward to it. So, John, from GMF Sports Consultants, uh, uh Super Bowl LV, baby. That's right. That's right. It should be a great game. I mean, NFL probably couldn't have not scripted a, a better matchup. Uh, you know, Brady, Mahomes, you know, is Brady going to continue his legacy? Or are we passing the torch here to Patrick Mahomes? You know, we'll see. I'm, I'm excited. It's, it's going to be a very good game. Both teams are playing good. So I'm excited to see uh, the matchup this week for sure. So we've got a pandemic. We're, we're, we're still dealing with where are you watching the game? I'm, I'm going to be watching it at home. I might go to a family member's house, uh, but I, I'm either going to be at home or, or going to a family member's house. Uh, and, and and that's about it. Really playing it low key uh, this year for the game. So just kind of sit back, relax, eat some food, have a couple of beers, and hopefully watch an entertaining game. Blackhawk West, glad you could make it. Are you there? Yeah, it, it's been a struggle. I, wife out of town. She took the normal computer I use. So, I, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? <laughs> hey, I, trust me. I've got a list of about 14 or 15 things in, in my life that I consistently va- blame on Vicky. So I appreciate that. <laughs> well, she she took the laptop. And, and I'm getting to that place where if you, if you throw off my – that's everything. So she took the computer with her, and I'm, I'm now playing with Siri. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, you know, I've got it. I've got, I've got an office in my house set up, and and I've got, you know, 
technically four monitors, four screens I can watch at any point in time. And and when I have to go on the road, like John, when when I was in Vegas and, and doing the show from the suite there, uh, with one monitor, I'm I'm just crippled. I really am. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not able to handle it. I love having two or three monitors open. Yeah. So um, so so I'm not sure if you got to see. Uh, Black Hawk West, the article I put out with my 14 plays, because it started as a late night joke. It was a Sunday night. It was after, you know, it, there was a field goal in the Buffalo game that meant nothing to anybody in the world but people that had the Buffalo team total in live action and the mm -hmm. over in live action. Well, I was on that list of people, so it made another ticket for me. And so I had some money, and I'm, I'm messing around. But Sunday night, when the last game of, of the day is going in the second half, there's not much on the board. And if you've ever been in a sports book cashing your tickets late on Sunday night, it, it's an airy place because earlier that day, you know, there's no social distancing going on at all. And that night, you can't even find a waitress. or Sometimes you can't find the bartender because the bartender's doing double duty. <laughs> he's, he's, he's taking out the trash, too. He doesn't even have a bar. Right. But – um but uh, I would not have had those uh, Saturday parlays with soccer or with hockey. I got two hockey parlays going. There's no way I would have had them if it isn't Blackhawk West involved. So I appreciate that very much. It doesn't mean a damn thing if, if the end result doesn't get the second half of the parlay. But the bottom line is, is I'm in a pretty good spot. I got more tickets on the Super Bowl than I've ever had in my life. I've got them all paid for in advance. And I have... Uh, everything but Tampa Bay and the under. If Tampa Bay and the under comes out, uh, I'm not going to do too well. But the way we bet, it can end up Tampa Bay and the under, and I can still cash a few tickets because, as you know, we don't just play the games. But what we're going to do to start is we're going to hop right into our live action, and we, we really have done a great job. But I, I thought about it this week. I put way too much effort into to live action thoughts. But as you know, Wes, you can win a lot of money. Now, you've been winning a lot of money early in hockey, just smashing period one action, which probably doesn't do us any good tonight. Uh, but the, the way we like to start is we start with John and say, John, you got any action already that's live on the board? Yeah, well, I, I was on Dallas uh, and the Columbus game for over one and a half for the first period. And I like Dallas for over two and a half for the game. Well, because Columbus went up, I'm staying with Dallas. I went back in for one and a half, but the the play right now is is for Dallas over two and a half for the game. Uh, they're averaging four goals a game. The other one, we have two great opportunities right here in hockey. Montreal is down by a goal. This is one of the top scoring teams in the league. So at this point, you could take a Montreal money line for a really good pay. And I love Dallas over two and a half goals for the game. And Chaz, as we learned the other night, they fire off three goals in the first period sometimes. Oh, you know what? That was that was crazy. They scored. They scored four minutes in, and then a minute later, and then they 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 had a power play, but then they give up a penalty, so it was four and four. And they scored, and then they scored again. And I literally shut the TV off and went back to work because I only had the first period action, and even though there was nine minutes left. I was fairly comfortable three nothing lead was going to make it. And the over already was already a winner because it was one and a half, you know? Yeah, All right. So while I, I, while I slide into my join jazz sports.com live action uh, board, uh, let's talk to John and see about John. Any action John has for tonight already? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I am on the college basketball, the Iowa game. Uh, they're currently up six right now. The initial spread was anywhere between five and five and a half. Um, if anywhere during the point in the game, uh, in these next couple of minutes, we're already about 15, uh, uh, I'm sorry, about five minutes into the second. If you can snag it under five, I would feel comfortable doing that. There's no sense in playing over what the game is right now. But uh, I was honestly actually looking at hockey as well, just to kind of reiter reiterate what Wes was talking about. The Montreal Canadiens, they were big, heavy favorites today. I think they were like minus 300. Where now, if you get them because they're down by a goal, if you're going to play the money line, I think they're probably about minus uh, one, maybe 120, 130. So you're you're getting a, a, a big advantage there also. And then another thing, I haven't checked it, but I've seen, I, I think it was over uh, one and a half goals for Montreal in the second period. You were getting uh, plus money on that as well. Um, so obviously, if we need Montreal to kind of get something going, I think it would be here in the second. So uh, I'm going to stick with hockey, go Montreal money line, and then over uh, one and a half goals second period. 
All right, so I'm I'm on. I'm in the Montreal game, and yeah. first of all, I'm looking at the second period, and what you're saying is you like over one and a half. Uh, over one and a half Montreal uh, Montreal goals. Yeah, the last time I checked, now they that, were getting plus one. I'm talking about the 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 period. Is it the period team total? The period. Not- yeah, just the period. Yeah, just right, for the not, second a, not period. a team total. The period. Not total. A, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So what about over two and a half at plus one ninety two? Uh, that that's that's good too. That's good too. I I, I think Montreal is going to start scoring here. I, Ottawa definitely has some issues, you know, goaltending and everything like that. And and just like kind of what we said, you know, Montreal's pretty solid team. So you know they're down a goal, and and obviously here in the second and the third period they got to get it going. All right. So what were you saying about Montreal again, Wes? Well, I was saying pretty much what John is saying. We got a great opportunity with a team like this. I was on them. I liked them beginning of the game. Amen. Laying the minus one and a half. Montreal can score four goals in seconds. Mm -hmm. So, but now we got an opportunity. If you still like the minus one and a half for the game, I believe it's a plus 120 pay on that. I wouldn't go there. Yeah. Yeah. I I wouldn't go there because they are down. I would just simply go either money line. uh, I would take the money line. And there's probably some value in taking plus one and a half. That's. This is not a team that that is going to lose games. I mean, they can't win them all, but they're not going to lose by two. Well, here's what we got: we got um, minus one fifty three is what I'm seeing for the including overtime, and for the uh, the their team total over is three and a half right now, and it's still minus one fifty. That seems awful high That's, for a team. I think that what, what? Well, I think what you're seeing there, because what I've seen over the course of the last couple of days. Odds makers are adjusting to certain teams while they're a little behind on other teams. They adjusted mm-hmm. to Boston and Edmonton and Tampa already. I'm not going to name the teams they haven't adjusted to because I don't know who's listening to this and I still want to cash. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I, I'll send. I'll send it to you in a private Ooh. message. The, the the teams that they that they're not quite scared of yet. All right. So yeah. So so when I, I when I, I think in that like line. That, when I see it like that, so so now that over one and a half is minus one thirty two. That's that's where I'm going. So I'm going to take the over one and a half points for Perry two, and I'm going to take it for at minus one thirty two. So I am doing that. Now let's talk about the basketball game. The basketball. You know what I like about the period two guys. The periods are the ones where we can say we cast before the show ended. It's, you're not going to get that with a game too many times. The team total in the game, we got to hang around. Don't get me wrong; it could be it could be a winner before the show ends, but it's not going to be in my account. That's <laughs> when you guys give me a play, and the money's in my account before nine o'clock rolls around. All right. So you were saying Iowa? That's the Ohio State game. Right? Yeah, yeah. Iowa, Ohio State, uh, two very good teams. Uh, Ohio State's uh, kind of missing a few pieces. Um, they have a very young point. I think the kid's like 17 years old. He graduated high school in December. He hasn't been with the team very long. So he's, he's actually playing really good, but I'd give obviously the experience to Iowa and Luca Garza. They're, they're a fast paced team. They love to run up and down the floor. So it's going to be hard for Ohio state. I think to keep up with them offensively. Um, if, well, if he scored, can snag, but, yeah, if he can snag two points in the first half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It Holy was very, cow. very, yeah, yeah, very high. Obviously, if you were a total guy, you, you would have got on the totals altogether. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Iowa is averaging almost 90 points, I think 89.2, somewhere around there, uh, just in game total. So it's going to be a lot for, I think, for Ohio State to continue to match that especially kind of being a little shorthanded with the injuries. And I was actually playing the zone defense right now, which is forcing Ohio State to kind of shoot more outside shots than they're accustomed to. Um, and like I said, just with the kind of the young being shorthanded, and they're also in a little bit of foul trouble. Ohio State's not very deep right now uh, on the other flip side where Iowa is very deep. Um, so if you can get them around that five or six range. Yeah, I, I think those, that ship has sailed, my friend. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Yeah, They're up by 11. But let me ask you this. Yeah. For um, the first half, it looks like they won by three. Did They They probably didn't cover the first half, then, did they? Uh, the first half total? Yeah, it, it would have been close. I think it, it. they probably would have put the first half uh, at probably minus three and a half, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, so if you were on that end, 
um, you, you you lost out on the on the first half, very back and forth. But as you can see now, Iowa's starting to pull away. Yeah, they, they, so, they're on a, they're on another ninety point half. And yeah, that, and that's what I think I'm going to do. You know, I, I, I'm going to go. I'm looking at. I'm going to take the Ohio State team total under eighty one and a half. And and here's why I'm doing that. And the reason I'm doing that, and it's minus one twenty two. The reason I'm doing that is because if the lead stays up into double digits, then you're not going to get the constant following at the end. At some point, you're going to get the last three or four possessions where all I was going to do is run out to their 30 seconds yeah. and throw a shot up or try to pass it in or, or whatever. So that that's what I'm going to do. So uh, that was my way of, of, of looking at a, a handicapping where you did the handicapping right, obviously. The team's up by by uh, by a, a, a large margin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just missed it by back. a couple minutes. We, we yeah, missed that, that, sec, that transaction from the second half. We missed it. So we we're a little bit late on that. But, yeah, yeah. we are on the, we were kind of on the right side of it. So, But, you know, and how many times, was you walk into a sports book, you like a horse, and post time, and they sh they – you hear the bell and that's it. You're done. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yep. Yep. All right. So, so, so I'm, I'm good with that. You know what? I, I got 14 tickets on the Super Bowl. I'm good with a couple live action plays. And I know you guys probably have some other things doing. I know that Wes, you've already cashed a couple that were early in that game, that a hockey game, right? Yeah, it, it's been a, a wild couple days in hockey. I mean, I, I was I was texting you guys with some of the plays. Last night, Chaz, we had one that paid in four minutes. Four minutes after the text yeah. message, it, it, it paid. I mean, it, it's well, these so, first look, periods Paolo, have been great. Paolo has done that with us in soccer. And the, the soccer, the soccer hockey variables that are similar are very, very, very many. There's a lot of them. I, I'm talking about, I notice it, especially – when you start looking at the beginning and the end of the game, because some teams do, they come out and they just attack it. And other teams, when that their opponent gets a little wary, they're very dangerous. So the first period and the third period, I, I see where there's definitely opportunities. And we're, we're getting a lot of really poor goalie play right now, all, all across the league, even the stars. Uh, I'm really surprised at, at how bad the, the goalies are playing. Everybody's scoring goals. There's certain games where it looks like a it it looks like a football score. It looks like an Army Navy seven to three game. I did see. I I, I I was on one of them. I was on them, and I had the uh, I had the over, so it was kind of weird. But then that's the other thing about live action. Like I mentioned, we had the opportunity to go with an over two and a half, and over three and a half, and over one and a half, and of course the odds adjust accordingly. And, and and don't get me wrong, we're very blessed. We cash a lot of tickets, but there's not wrong with having a little human greed in you. You know, when you took four and a half and five and a half, and you could have had seven and a half and eight and a half because the final score is seven to three in a hockey game. Uh, but what are you going to do? You can only do what you do. All right. So when we come we come back from break, we're going to slide right into props. I'm not sure how many props these guys look at. There's a thousand, and really, if you want to have them all looked at by Sunday, you pretty pretty much had to start already. <laughs> but we're going to cover those props for Super Bowl LV. You're listening to Sports Betting Weekly. We're on Belly Up Sports Podcast Network and the World Wide Sports Radio Network. We'll be right back. It, it is the World Wide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Sports Betting Weekly. You keep lying when you ought to be truthing. And you keep losing when you ought to not bet. Sit back and enjoy the show. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Welcome back to Sports Betting Weekly. I am Second Half Chaz. We are joined by John from GMF Sports Consultant. Somewhere out there, Black Hawk Wes is with us too. <laughs> are covering Super Bowl LV, Super Bowl 55. Now, I have had some really, really fond Super Bowl memories, but none is better than when uh, the Chicago Bears played the Indianapolis Colts, and the opening kickoff was taken by a, a great, great defensive back who was returning kicks that day. It was the opening kickoff of the Super Bowl. 
I had him 40 to 1. He cashed within 13 seconds, and I don't remember anything more about that Super Bowl. But it was a <laughs> four figure day for me, and I don't remember what I was drinking, but I do remember I don't remember much. <laughs> That was that I, definitely my highlight. My second best ever was Super Bowl 53. It was the Rams 13 to 3 loss to the Patriots. And the reason it was my favorite one is because I had the New England Patriot guy that scored. I forget even who it was. For the first touchdown, for the last touchdown, and of course for the first New England touchdown. Well, guess what, guys? When there's only one touchdown in a football game. All three of those bets cashed on the same same play. Those are those are my two prop highlights. John, you got any that you remember? Just they just make you smile even now thinking about them. Um, not nothing too crazy as as a forty to one, but there was the Patriots Super Bowl a couple of years back where we actually had Julian uh, Edelman uh, as like a fifteen to one to win. Uh, MVP and he oh, yeah. he actually yeah. yeah he he won that and, and there was actually the couple of guys that I gave it to depending on what book they actually got odds that were that were thirty to one and higher so those guys really really capitalized on that and that that was pretty much it when the there was also one where the Patriots were obviously down to the Atlanta Falcons um, I I was on the Patriots side of that so you could imagine how excited I was that whole second half. You know, the first half I was, you know, cursing everybody and, and had my head down. And then that probably that second half was probably one of the greatest second halves I, I, I think I've ever watched. If, if obviously, if you were on that side of it. So um, I cast, have to be probably one of my top ones. I cast a prop ticket on that game. It was what would the longest touchdown be? It was like 57 yards. You know that prop. Mm -hmm. And I got it on the pick six. Brady, <laughs> pick six it was over 60 yards. Yeah. They still won the game. Amazing. Yep. What about you, Blackhawk Wes? Well, I will tell you, you, one of your favorite moments is also one of my favorite moments because I was wearing a Devin Hester jersey that day. And it was, was one of those things where everybody was saying he's going to do it. Everybody's saying he could do it. And, and the dude came out and did it. And God, it, what a feeling it was. I, I know exactly where I was, and I'll never forget that feeling. I mean, that was my, I had nothing on it. Other than a, a piece of my heart uh, on the Bears, and and you know, then Peyton Manning had to shatter those dreams. Oh yeah, it, it obviously went down from there. But I'll tell you, one of the things I I remember before the alcohol kicked in heavily was I thought he was slowing down, but what he was, he was looking at the monitor and seeing nobody was behind him. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you guys, when a thousand dollars on the line over thirteen seconds, it seems like about a minute and a half. It doesn't go very quickly. And it looked like he was running slow. And then in the highlights, they showed that he was looking up at the monitor. And there was no one within like 20 yards of him. But that was uh, that was definitely um, – that, yeah. that was a great thing. Because, you know, with the New England one, I didn't know I won three tickets on the same play because the game hadn't ended yet. But with uh, with the Indianapolis Colts uh, game, that was, that was special. All right, so let's look at Sunday's props. Yeah. As I've mentioned to you guys in the past – I really only look at the first player to score. That's really kind of what I do. And it's mostly because with championshipfootballs.com, we're creating the coolest present any Super Bowl winner's team will get in the, as a present that year, guaranteed, because they're special balls. So we have a lot of work to do. So I don't put a lot of effort into it. Of course, this year that changed with my 14 ticket layaway program. So, John, let's talk to you first. What about you and props? Do you use them a lot? Do you do you give them out to your guys? Do you play them? Yeah, yeah. I I, I do quite a bit of props. I for me, I, I honestly think prop bets is, is probably the better way to go. Um, it's something where you could bet a, a couple of dollars and, and enjoy the game. Um, you, you know, especially with this Super Bowl, this Super Bowl is going to be extremely tough. You know, it, it can go either way. You know, if you're a Brady fan, obviously you're on the Buck side of it. But but I truly enjoy the props because it's almost like every play. If you play a couple of them, you, you always have action. So it keeps you entertained. You know, you can bet a couple dollars and, and not have to worry about it and just have some fun. And if you happen to hit a couple of them, then, you know, you're excited to hit a couple of them. So, yeah, I'll definitely be betting them and, and I definitely give them out 
But, you know, I, that's what I tell my players. You know, prop bets shouldn't go crazy. You know, whatever you want to put on them, 5, 10, 15, 20 bucks, you, you know, and, and just kind of spread it out and, and just really enjoy the game. Well, one of the things I talked about last week is if you tell me your prop bets, I know who you like. So give me give me a top two, three. Give me what you got. What do you think? Okay. So, yeah, so there's a couple of them. Um, so let's see. So I'm going to be a Tyreek Hill. Longest reception over 29 and a half. Um, we all seen what he did to the box when they met, you know, previously a couple of weeks ago. That's at minus 110. So that's pretty decent. Uh, Patrick Mahomes over, uh, I'm sorry, the longest throw, uh, 41 and a half yards. Uh, I'm going to be on that. So you can kind of tell where I'm kind of going with this already, right? <laughs> well, you know, that, um, those but, the, I love that yeah. prop because that's yeah. a prop that could both hit on the same play. Yeah, you you can you can get that in the first maybe first play. Who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? Uh, there was also one that I seen. Uh, there was a pass interference over nineteen and a half yards. I, I I hate using the word lock, but like I almost feel like that's a lock. It's, I I think with the way these two teams pass the ball and how they both throw it down the field, I would almost do that. There was another one failed uh, point after attempt. Uh, we're actually getting plus money at this plus 180. So if they miss a kick, if they don't get the uh, you know, the extra point at the end, you're getting plus money on that. And then I'm gonna move over to a couple MVPs that I got that I think have some value. I think Kelsey at eight to one has still has some value. Um, and then I'm gonna throw in a couple uh long shots. Uh, McCall Hardman, he's getting 60 to one. I'm gonna throw a couple bucks on that, and then on the other side. Just in case, uh, I like Evans at 35 to 1, too. I, I think you're getting some good value on that. Obviously, when you start talking, you know, 60 to 1 and a 35 to 1, you, you know, you can lay a couple bucks down and, and hope you get lucky on that. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. You know what? 40 to 1 plays, don't have, they don't have to have a high winning percentage to have a return on your investment, you know? Yep. But I, you made a point about that. You said you're going to put a couple bucks on it. Are you betting – Mobile or are you going into the casino? Uh, I'm I'm gonna bet mobile. I, I'm not gonna go into the casino. I I was already there uh, at the casino earlier today, and the line was already out of control. Um, if you haven't been to a sports book, it, it, I, I would even say starting on Friday, the line is gonna be out of control, especially now social distancing rules. Um, so the the waits even longer. Um, I'm, I'm doing everything on my phone. Way, way easier just to do it on my phone. That way I don't have to deal with the lines and the hassle uh, of dealing with all that. So mobile's the way to go. Yeah, well, the reason I asked, like if I went into the sports book, what, is there a minimum? Can I bet $2 on, uh, you know, whatever? Uh, the I, I believe, let me see what it is. I have this. This is, this is one. I, I got the book earlier. This is kind of a shortened version, but this is still probably about a good – uh, I don't know, eight eight pages altogether. Um, some places do have minimums. Some are like two, some are five. So you, you can put, I, I think most of them are $2 uh, and then maybe some of them are five. So, you know, you can you can go in there with a couple of dollars and play a couple uh, 40 to one shots and see if you get lucky with, you know, 10, 20 bucks. Well, yeah, I mean, really, if you take seven bets and they're all, and you all try to find seven plays that are equal odds, you know what, and they're all close to seven to one. You throw five hours on all of them. If one of them comes in, you're going to get all your money back, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to watch the game and have some excitement. So, and, that, and that's really all you're looking for in, the, in this kind of game. This is the Super Bowl. You know, you know, this is where you want to have fun and enjoy the game and, and enjoy the two teams, you know? All right, before we head over to Blackhawk West and talk about some of his props, let's do an update here. Uh, John, do you have an update on the basketball game? Yeah, actually, actually we, uh, Ohio State uh, started scoring, uh, so they're actually up. So they're actually up by one. It's 71-70 right now. Um, so they, they, they erased an 11-point deficit in, in a matter of, of six, seven minutes there. So that was, that was a big turnaround for Ohio State. Yeah, so that, that you know, on that bet, I still have – I still have uh... – I don't have a shot of winning that bet, actually, because I got, yeah. up, I got yeah. up one. They've got already thirty, so yeah, that that one's not looking good. How about the, the Blackhawk West? How about that hockey? Well, Dallas, we're still alive at the over two and a half for the game. Columbus is up three to one, and uh, same thing on the Montreal. Montreal's down three to one, so we're we're getting dogged right now. But well, no, uh, but on that you know, Montreal, Montreal and Dallas, they can both pop off goals real quick, so. 
Well, and the bet that I have is that second period over. So I got one of those goals. So you, you, got got you, you need one goal. And it don't matter who gives it to me. It doesn't that's matter. It. Everybody, participation trophies, as you They're like. Right. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it comes you down just, to. Just got to hit the back of the net. That's all you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, Blackhawk West, uh, props. What I asked John was, you know, do you do, do you do, them? do do you talk about them when you give out your information on the uh, your network that you're on? Do you play them? Talk to me. Did he disappear? Did you no. Did you hear me? Uh, I, I didn't you. hear the last. Okay. Seven. All I'm saying is props. Not everybody plays. Them. Do you pray play them? If so. You know, you're going to tell us who you got, but also, do you give them out? You talk to those guys. You you do a, a show every yes, week where you I, give I, people investment advice. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I play the props. I I play the props, and I I give the plays out to to my members too. But I approach it as a business. So no Gatorade color, no minutes to sing the anthem, no who does the MVP thank. Um, I, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, Why do you not I don't, bet God? Who well, doesn't bet God? <laughs> well, I, I, I backed off of the game action on this because I would really be upset with myself if the chiefs won and didn't cover and I couldn't celebrate because I had an investment. So, but the prop bets that I'm advising is the anytime scorer. And so I, I took Kelsey and Hill and threw them out the window because it's minus minus one sixty five. I, I, you know, I always talk even, even betting all across the board and you're trying to play for the record. So I got nine plays on different players. And if three of them hit that ends up paying as if we went six and three on the whole deal. I, I like Antonio Brown. I like Miller for Tampa. I like Gronkowski for Tampa. We're talking plus 250, plus 275, plus 300. Patrick Mahomes loves running the ball inside the 30s. I hit him for a plus 550 last year when he ran for a touchdown. So I, I really like those plays. And then the other play I really like is I, I found some value within what I think is a good play. If you take, will there be a defensive or special teams touchdown scored? It pays plus 200 if you bet on anybody. But if you take both teams and bet them, Kansas City does it and Tampa does it, you bet them individually. One pays plus 375, the other plays plus 450. So I bet them individually. Anybody does it, it's a profit on both. And if they both do it, that's even better. But uh, so it, the the other one, I like Sherman, uh, Richard Sherman, plus 1,800. And that's the fullback. And in, in the first meeting of these games, the Chiefs really struggled to run the ball. They controlled the time of possession. They were under 80 yards rushing the ball. So when they hit the goal line, they might be looking for some oddball. And they might hand it to Sherman and let him just muscle in. They've handed the ball to Kelsey in the in the red zone. So plus eighteen hundred, that pays for the whole lot. The Chiefs red zone playbook looks like something from the Harlem Globetrotters playbook. It really does. They do things <laughs> yeah, that it, it, it really does. That was pretty good, actually. I just made that one off the top of my head. <laughs> but no, no, I really, they do. That's what they do. They're amazing, you know? Yeah, it's their, their offense. The way, first of all, just the whole schematic and the way they constantly move people throughout the course of a game where Tyreek Hill will be lined up in a different slot, Kelsey will be lined up in a different slot. The way they can kind of move these running backs, even though they don't really use them, but they, you, the way they position them and moving them out, you know, Harden and, and these other players in there, you, you know, now Sammy Watkins will kind of be back into the mix this week as well. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's just watching them is, is, is really, really uh, fun to watch, how they just really move around and how, first of all, how Patrick Mahomes is able to just work the whole schematic of that offense. So it's going to be tough for Tampa Bay, I think, you know, defensively. No doubt about and it. So yeah, so what's, so I'm not, what's I'm really interesting. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say what's really interesting to to add to what to add to what John was saying. The Chiefs controlled the time of possession the last time they played and only rushed for under 80 yards. So they're wow. doing it in wild ways and short passing, and uh, it's just really bizarre this Tampa defense and the way that they get owned on time of possession and and the way that the Chiefs are doing it. No, they normally will do cross sport props, you know, and it's usually 
a hockey game that night or an NBA game that day or something like that. But they've got one here. What will be higher? The number of Travis Kelsey receptions or the number on the back of the winning horse for the Kentucky Derby. Mm. So you're betting that February 7th, that's all of February, all of March, all of April. You got to wait to the first Saturday in May to cash that ticket. There ain't no way I'm putting money on that ticket. Yeah, that's a, that's a long time to wait in cash. You know, that's months. It sure is. Yeah. Man. I've, I've been <laughs> a future on the winner. Yeah, yeah. If, if you don't bet it on the mobile app, chances are you might lose that ticket if you have a paper ticket, you know. <laughs> yeah, and if you think about the odds, if 20 horses go, it's yeah. already 20 to 1 just to do that. Just picking that number out of the hat is the 20 to 1 odds, you know. Yep, yep. But, yeah, so they've got page after page after page. I'm just going to spin down, and, and we're going to talk about a couple of them. All right. The even-odd number that the half or the game will add even at. I, I never understood why someone would bet that, but I guess, you know, that's no different than betting the coin toss or something. But, uh, John, have you ever bet will the first half or game end odd or even? Abs ab absolutely not. Uh, that's strictly just going in blind. Like that's from uh, kind of what Wes said. You, I look at sports as as investing. That's that's gambling. That's gambling to degenerate one hundred and one status right there. You know, hey, look, if, oh, if that's what you want to do, if that's what you want to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, All right. Yeah. So let's look at Tampa Bay now. What are things we know about Tampa Bay? Is they've got a good offense. They got a great quarterback. They have a stat here. How many touchdowns will Tampa Bay score? And it starts with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six or more. If you were going to bet that right now, Wes, what number would you give me? How many touchdowns will Tampa Bay score? Well, the over-under for the game is 56, 56 and a hook. So you would think that that's four touchdowns on each side. So I, I don't think Tampa scoring six touchdowns. I think the Chiefs defense is playing way too good a ball in these last five games mm -hmm. for that to happen. But I don't think either team's going to score six touchdowns. But I think I don't think the over under number is too far off of what the reality is going to play out to be. So three and a half, four touchdowns per team, probably about where I'd go. Yeah, four would get you plus three hundred. Five would get you plus six hundred. So those, and then. As you said, six or more is plus 750. That's only for Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. All right, before we go to break, we're going to hop back on and we're going to get some updates. And let's see here. We're going to look at the NFL first, right? And we have um, – what, what do we have? A couple things you were looking at. Wes, what was Dallas that? Dallas just scored. Da Dallas just scored. So we're three to two there now. Yep. Uh, if you were on the over for the second period of one and a half, you nailed it. Yep. And uh, we're still on track. We're still on track for Dallas two and a half. And we hit the Dallas over one and a half on the dip. Yep. There we go. And then um, uh, uh, Ottawa, Montreal, that was the other game. So yeah, Montreal still just blew up. Montreal just blew a really nice power play opportunity. And it's still three to one with under two to go in the second. All right. So we're going to need a late goal there. And yep. then we're going to slide over to uh, college basketball, where that game is, is going down to the wire, huh? It uh, Iowa did not lay it. I mean, uh, Ohio State did not lay down. They 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 were down by eleven when we looked last, and they they've come all the way back. That game is going to the wire right now. So, yeah, that, that's a close game. Yeah, I, Iowa State, like uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Ohio State, like you said, they were down by eleven. It looked like Iowa was going to start running away with it, and then Ohio started clamping down. They started making some really really good shots, outside shots. So All right, when we come back from break, we are going to talk to the guys who we've heard a little bit about who they like in their props. And yeah, you know what? You can kind of tell who they like for the game from that. I'm Second F Chaz. You listen to Sports Betting Weekly on the Belly Up Podcast Network and the World Wide Sports Radio Network. It is, it is the World Wide Sports Radio Network. At championshipfootballs.com, they offer a 100% money-back guarantee on every single souvenir football that they sell. The coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. 
There's nothing worse than trying to find the right gift for somebody that already has everything. Whether that special present is for a New England Patriots fan or an Ohio State Buckeyes backer. Maybe Grams is a lifelong New York Giants supporter. Or your brother-in-law is a 12th man living in Seattle. Know a member of the Michigan State Alumni Association? Is there a better Father's Day gift for someone who's a Baltimore Ravens fan? Send them the coolest present they'll open that day guaranteed. Now if your favorite pro team is the Buffalo Bills or those Minnesota to Vikings, well, they're sorry about that. Also, if you're a New Mexico State Aggies or Tulane Green Wave alumnus, not much they can do. After all, the name isn't nice effort. You had a pretty good season, footballs.com. The name is championshipfootballs.com. The coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. Hey, this is an important message. I'm Second Half Chaz from Sports Betting Weekly. Sports betting is supposed to be a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. If you're hurting yourself by gambling with money you don't have, check out our website for the Gambler's Anonymous phone number. When Vince Young scored on 4th and 5 in the 2006 Rose Bowl, two things happened. The Texas Longhorns won the NCAA title, and ChampionshipFootballs.com was born. From Texas to Alabama to Ohio State, and now for Super Bowl winners too. ChampionshipFootballs.com is the place for the coolest present they'll open that day guaranteed now 10 years later championshipfootballs.com has the autographs too see if any of these names remind you of a special time in your football life michael bennett lou holtz joe montana devin smith Jameis winston rocky blyer rocket ishmael era parsegian mike stonebreaker chris zorich luther bradley todd light tony rice lawrence taylor dave casper marcus mariota rudy rudiger david tyree enter the promo code radio and you'll instantly say Save $50 on any of the championshipfootballs.com autographed footballs. Championshipfootballs.com. The coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Sports Betting Weekly. Sit back and enjoy the show. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Welcome back to Sports Betting Weekly. I am second half Chaz. We have... As always, John from GMF Sports Consultants and Black Hawk West from 151 Sports Investing. We have covered some live action. Now, this week, it didn't work out too well for me personally. I know that uh, West cashed a couple tickets. Now, it's called Sports Betting Weekly. It's not called Sports Betting Daily. And that <laughs> is because there are some Mondays that if football's not on Monday night, there's some Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays that I might not even really uh, make a play. I, I, I'll i look for some opportunities, but again, you just can't hop on a game if you haven't watched it. And that Ohio State game tonight was, was one of them. We, they scored so many points in the first quarter. I should have never bet the under. I should have bet the over. It would have already cashed. But you know what? That's kind of how we learn about this live action. And we win more bets than we lose. So I don't ever have a problem tearing up a ticket. Uh, Montreal did not score, so they went to break 3-1, to one, so that was a loser as well. So this is, for me, it was an 0-2 uh, night. However, the last two weeks in a row, I hung up from you guys. Once I won, once I lost, and the other time, they were both having Gonzaga on TV tonight. So I don't know if Gonzaga, <laughs> is Gonzaga even playing tonight? I probably should look. They are. <laughs> they are, they, yeah. Right as soon as we hang up, they, uh, Gonzaga starts. So I'll pay attention. They did win for me. One of those plays I have in the uh, on my parlays is with Gonzaga. As a matter of fact, I, I wrote them down. I had Gonzaga a couple times. So I had Gonzaga back on January 28th. It's a Super Bowl bet now. And then I also had Gonzaga another time. I had Gonzaga on January 30th. And that's now a Super Bowl bet. I had Virginia three times, three different times I bet Virginia and I keyed him to. Now, remember, a lot of people don't remember this. Virginia is technically the reigning national champion because they didn't have a national championship last year. That, they, didn't, they didn't have it, so they're still going. They're, and they're and Virginia still looks really good. And, you know, they're never, they're never going to – normally they're not going to score 95 points. You know, they're going to beat somebody by holding them to 43 points. That's what they do. Um but so I, I had, a, as I mentioned, I had a couple of hockey. So I had, I had a college basketball, college basketball, college basketball, college basketball, college basketball, hockey, hockey, college basketball, college basketball, college basketball, college basketball. So yeah, I did not put any action uh, on the NBA 
in in live action. But we talked about that last night or last week with that mm-hmm. Houston game. That Houston game was crazy. You know, one team's up by 15, the other team's up by 16. It's just amazing. It's just NBA, they score so many points so quickly. But so we heard a little bit of your props. We know that uh, John had mentioned that if there's a big pass from Mahomes to Hill and it goes over 30 yards, he's going to cash two tickets. Yeah, we'll, we'll cash two tickets. Hopefully that gets done early and quick, and then that way we'll kind of free rolling for the rest of the night. So that, that would All be right, awesome. I'm going to guys, I'm gonna ask you first, John, I'm going to ask you to tell me the final score and tell me how you see it getting there because – Wes has been part of the show. You've been part of the show. For me, it's all about your why. I don't care what you say to me. If your why is good, I'm okay with that. So tell me, John, what do you think the final score is and how it gets there? I I think it's going to be close. I have KC winning. I, I would probably put them in, in that 32 range, and I have Tampa Bay probably from that 24 to 27 range. Um, the reason why I have KC uh, winning is, is the defense – I don't think Tampa Bay is going to be able to do enough to hold them defensively. We we seen obviously when they played a couple of weeks ago, and we have seen what happened versus the Browns, and then obviously versus versus Buffalo. Patrick Mahomes is very good at reading these zone defenses, and and I think if in order for Tampa Bay to have a chance, they're going to have to bring pressure, or they're going to have to at least disguise how they bring pressure. If they go into this zone defense, and this is what Buffalo drove me crazy when they played two weeks ago was that before Patrick Mahomes ever got up to the line of scrimmage, Buffalo was already dropped in that two man high safety. Patrick Mahomes, when he sees that he's going to pick you apart. And, and, and so this is where I think they have so many crossing routes and everything like that. They, they have to at least bring the illusion. Tampa Bay is going to have to get very schematic wise, you know, tricks and, and kind of do all this stuff. And, and I don't see that happening. You, you know, with Kelsey, uh, Tyree kill, those guys are just too good. I have to go with Casey. I also don't want to buy my brother-in-law another steak dinner again. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go I'm going to go with Casey uh to win the game. I think it's going to be close. You know, Brady's going to keep it close. Uh but I, I have Casey Casey pulling away here. Yeah, it, it, it may be cheaper for you if you lose again to just order him one of those steaks, you know, uh, Omaha steaks. Yeah, the, just, yeah, like, the Omaha steaks out. I got to get I got to get it delivered to him, you know. <laughs> Hopefully they got a deal going. You get on. frequent flyer points at this point. <laughs> All right, Blackhawk, what's give us what you think the final score of Super Bowl Fifty Five is going to be and how it gets there. Yeah, so I I think that it's going to be KC thirty five, Tampa thirty one, and you know I did a lot of breakdown in this game going back to what it looked like when these two teams played each other, but I tried to build a case for Tampa. And since the Chiefs and Tampa played, I think this game, there's a lot of lessons that these teams learn from each other and other experiences that they're going to bring in. The Chiefs learned from last year that they cannot give up these big leads and expect to come back. That's too much to ask of a quarterback to do, even though he can do it. But since Tampa played the Chiefs, they've been averaging 35 points a game. And that's what it's going to take if they want to beat the Chiefs. Uh, Tampa also, in their 11 wins, Three of them went over 40 points and eight of them went over 30 points. Uh, But I think what's going to happen is the Chiefs know that they can't take their foot off the gas. Last week was the first last game was the first game. They looked like they were actually putting effort into playing the football or just playing the game. So I think I think that the way that Tampa is going to end up getting beat is they're going to be in a situation where they're down, probably short. But KC is going to sack Brady because Brady is not very mobile. And KC just beat two mobile quarterbacks. Uh, Brady's going to take a couple sacks. That Tampa O-line is not very good. And uh, I think Mahomes is going to use his legs. He loves running inside the 30s. And uh, they're going to they're gonna get up early just the way that they did the last time. And they're going to know this time they cannot let Tampa back in the game. And and I think it, this, could be, this could be some old school Florida Gator type stuff if they – if they get a lead and they feel like they just want to keep pouring it on and they, they very well could. Uh, but I think it's 35, 31 uh, Brady's going to take some sacks late and they won't be able to catch up because of that. Well, you got to think. Uh, I will. Okay. Well, I, the only other thing I was going to say is if you are on the Tampa side of things, I would play the money line because if Tampa, if Tampa covers, they're winning the game. They're winning if the Tampa, game. Yep. If if Tampa covers it, you're better off playing the money line. It's going to be because they did something to shut down and, and make the Chiefs look inept 
at a certain piece of the game. So if you're of the Tampa belief, don't don't take the three points. Take the money line and just go. Well, one of the things I was going to say is, yeah, if you're the Chiefs, you got two things that you know that they almost came back on you last time you played. And a couple of years ago, the biggest up, the biggest comeback in Super Bowl history was by the guy you're playing. You can't you can't take your foot off the gas if you're in this game and you have a lead, and that's on either team. Uh, the the one thing that that I use, and you know, it's done very well for me so far, is that Easy Sports Data program where we use colors and letters and numbers to simplify handicapping. I really should try to come up with something for the horse racing because that reading that horse racing form was so difficult but the one thing that jumped out at me and i talked about it when they played green bay and i talked about it the week before and now it's up to 10 and that means in the last 10 straight games nobody has scored 28 points on tampa not a team not a, an organization not a quarterback nobody they've given up 27 a handful of times but nobody scored 28 so that was one of the reasons why I went with the money line. And when I first started, when I first started doing my plays for my, uh, what I call my Super Bowl layover program. Now, I, I haven't done layover. My mother, God, God rest, she's back in, in Connecticut. I don't think she watches, but she's 84 now, 85. She used to do layover. Layover was a big deal, when, and I'm old, but when I was a kid, layover was a big deal. You, they'd pick out the presents, and then they'd come up with the money by Christmas. You know What I did is I, I picked out my presents, and I came up with the money before the Super Bowl. So it's going to be for me if what Wes said is the final score, it's going to be for me. Christmas in February because I'm cashing 14 tickets. Now, the only difference, and John's doing most of his betting mobile as well. When you bet online, it's not as much fun. There's something great about sitting there at the window, and each time he puts a ticket in, the number gets higher, and it gets higher, and it gets higher. And then they say those questions that every sports better wants to hear. You know what the that question is, John, right? How do you want that? Hey, yeah, how do you? That's, oh, that's, oh, that's the best one. Yeah, oh, all, all large, all question. large. <laughs> that's it, baby. You know, you yeah. got some winnings when they ask you, "How do you like? How do you want?" That? Yeah, yep. All right, so here's some of that easy sports data numbers that I was talking about. I mentioned that um, the 27, nobody scored 28 on them in 10, 10 games. 10 games is a long time. 10 games is a long time. What do I know though? I also know that you take out the Cleveland game which was a game that, of course, the quarterback was injured and didn't play 25% of the game. And in every single other playoff game, they've scored 31 points, Kansas City. So here's the thing. Now, for some teams, yeah, well, that's great. But you're talking about quarterbacks that are on TV now as announcers. With the, with the Chiefs, those games are with these same players. Because they have now, in the last three years, think of how many playoff games they have in the last three years. It's just amazing. Actually, I can tell you exactly because I got my easy sports data. <laughs> so they had already two this year. They had three the year before and two the year before. So that's two, four, six, seven games. This is their eighth playoff game in the last three years. You can't really replicate that, replicate that experience, in my opinion. Tampa Bay, though. Tampa Bay has scored 18-plus in four of their last five. They scored 30-plus in six of their last six. When, when you're talking overall, on the road, though, you know what? And I know Blackhawk West knows this because he's a Kansas City fan. Kansas City plays just as good on the road as any team in the league. I mean, Wes, what would you say about their road their road victories? They they travel well, they, and they've traveled especially well this year. I, I don't get it. They don't have a fantastic run game. Their defense is just tightening up, but typically a run game is what travels. And Arrowhead is such a fantastic, loud, crazy place for a, an opponent to have to come in, into that they're playing so well on the road. It's it's great. All right, so let's do this to, to kill the last few minutes. We're going to uh... – we're going to uh, ask for your two. First, I'm going to ask you for your two team parlay. All right. You got a two team parlay to make, John, for the Super Bowl. What's it going to be? Uh, Casey and the over. Got to take the over. Nobody nobody bets on theirs. Nobody wants to see a boring game. <laughs> no, I, I yeah, do yeah, know yeah. that yeah. the under ticked down from when I first had it. 
it it did. It was it was fifty seven and a half, fifty seven, and now all the way it, it went down to fifty six. And then also probably you know that three and a half number for you guys have been watching it you know ever since it opened. It's three and a half. Not now it's the, it's down to three. Um, you know three at the minus one twenty, maybe minus one fifteen, depending on on where you're at. But uh, you know this is an opportunity where maybe if guys aren't used to it, look at all the different books. You, you know, and kind of see what the lines and the odds are and, and, and shop around. It doesn't matter which side you're on, but if you kind of compare books, you maybe can get a half a point or maybe so save yourself some juice, you know, if yeah, you shop uh, around for the book. The, the half a point is normally something I don't even care about, but if you lose by it, trust me, you'll remember oh. that. Oh, Black yeah, when you, when you lose by it, that hurts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Black Oak West, you're, the, you're safe, right? You're in Kansas City in the over. Yeah, I'm, I'm going KC in the over. So I'm going to ask but you I'm hoping, question. I'm hoping, go ahead. Yeah, no, you go for it. What are you hoping for? I'm ho I'm hoping that Tampa scores a field goal first, then I get some live action first half Chiefs. There you go. All right, so second question, I'm going to start with Blackhawk West. You got $100 you can put on in any prop you want. It's free money. It's a free play ticket. You walk in the casino, they give you a free play certificate. I got one of those at Caliente once. It was so cool. Uh, you can put it on anything you want. One bet, though. Tomorrow or Sunday, what are you going to do? Chiefs over 0.5 for a field goal in the first half. So they just got to kick one. They just got to kick one in the first half. It's minus 135, but it's a W. It's that low, huh? Wow. That low. Okay, John, same question. You got $100. Free play ticket. You walked in the casino. They were... You Dude, they draw your name out of a hat. I don't care how you got it, but you got it. You could only use it for one play. It's got to be a prop. What are you doing? Since it's a free play, I, I would go to uh, Patrick Mahomes' first uh, throw will be a completion. Uh, if you look at Patrick Mahomes ever since he was a starter, his first throw, he's completed like 70% of his passes. Now, you're only, I, I believe you're probably getting minus 200, which the odds is isn't that good. But if you're going to tell me you have 70% chance of hitting that, I'll take that all day with a free play. Why not? Well, yeah. I mean, if you think about it. You put a $100 free play ticket down, and then you go back to cash, and he gives you $50. That's, you didn't lose $50. Exactly. Yep, yep. And, and like I said, with him hitting that 70%, you know, that, that that's pretty solid. So I, I would look at that if somebody's got some free play money they want to throw around. If someone gave me that hundred, same hundred dollar tab, I'd walk up to the window and I would a hundred dollars on Tom Brady to score the very first touchdown in the game. And the reason <laughs> I would do that is because I could take that memory. That would be a ticket I would be able to talk about for the rest of my life, no doubt about it. All right, so listen, have a great, safe uh, Super Bowl. Uh, we had the, we had some of the tags on the bottom showing how you reach John, how you reach Wes. Uh, be safe out there and cash them tickets. I'm Second Half Chaz. You've been listening to Sports Betting Weekly. You can follow us on the Belly Up Podcast Network and the Worldwide Radio Sports Network. Always be cashing.